All right, y'all. This is Carol Kornacki. And this is just a clip from the testimony that she shared. Man, I think somewhere I read that this is from like the 80s. And this is just starting to go viral again, specifically on TikTok. And a lot of people are saying that this is like one of the greatest testimonies they've ever heard. I'm just going to listen to this clip because this is a clip that really has the most movement and motion right now. But if you want to watch the whole testimony, I'll link it down below in the description. But let's get into it. Carol Kornacki, ex witch turns to Jesus. Let's see what this is all about. The trouble is when you play with the devil, he doesn't play fair. He'll give you everything you want, all the drugs you want, all the women you want, all the promises and all the power you want. And when he's done with you, he'll kick the legs out from under you. It sounds like the Broadway play Damn Yankees, where they <laughs> sell their soul to uh, the, the devil and they become a champion baseball player. I never saw that, but that's interesting. And that's why you hear rock stars sometimes say, I sold my soul to the devil. Mm -hmm. Because once you make that, that trade, he'll give you what you want. But people need to understand that the devil is not sharing his kingdom with anyone. He's selfish and hateful, and his personality is that of hate and violence. And so as I began to encounter these spirits from a pleasant person, even though I was a fall-down drug addict, I began to get, take on the personality of the devil. I began to act. I began to hate. I began to become violent in my what do you card mean, began readings. to hate? You, were, you, must have, you, you had hate no all love anyway. You were Really? Oh, hate all the more. And I love to see people hurt. Like, I'd like to do a card reading where I knew a man was committing adultery. I'd name names. And it was just an evil behavior. Hmm. And so here I was with these spirits operating in this park, cursing people. I cursed one man's city, fell three stories into a wheelbarrow. Thank God that wheelbarrow was there because he would have been killed. I was astral projecting. I was studying all this witchcraft. I thought everything was wonderful. The same spirits, as you said in the opening, that gave me power began to turn on me. Why would they turn on you? Because the personality of spirits of darkness is not a nice, friendly personality. You can tell even my people that are deeply involved in witchcraft, the way they dress, the way they act, ghoulish, and black nails, and dark colors, and very strange it, it, in their it acting. like, I used to watch westerns as a kid, and in the western, a new guy comes into town, and goes and plays poker, and he wins. And the next day, he said, boy, these are country bumpkins. I'm going to take them for all they're worth. And he bets everything he has, and the game is fixed, and he loses everything he has. Excellent. And that's exactly the way it happened, Sid. That's excellent. And that's exactly what had happened to me. I thought I had arrived. But as these spirits began to turn and to torment, the same spirits that gave me power to read cards and mm -hmm. astral project and operate in the solical power, the psyche power, would turn on me. What does that mean? What do you mean, turn mm -hmm. on you? It was as if all of a sudden the same voices that would say this man is committing adultery or this woman steals at work or this girl's going to get married last year when I was reading cards would now say to me, you should die. It's better to really? just die. Said I would walk around with a gun in my mouth. I remember the metal used to burn my tongue. I would just suck on a gun waiting for the moment to stop this power that I had entered into to stop the destruction of my mind. My drugs increased. I would take needles, Sid, and people that were the worst drug addicts in town would not get high with me. Mm. I would go into a bathroom and take a needle and bang it into my arms. I had thick growths all the way down. Today you can see they're totally gone, but thick growths and abscesses all the way up and down my arms. In that drug state, I'd go out and become even more promiscuous, hoping that someone would just love me for a little while. And that's what our kids are doing today, Sid. They want somebody to love them for 15 minutes. That's why sex has become an everyday movement. I mean, it's nothing to be 11 years old and to go to bed with your boyfriend that you go to school with. And so here I was nailing myself with needles, blood coming out, demon possessed from the, 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 the spirits that I had invited inside, broken. In one particular time in, in all this story, they locked me up in a mental institution. Sid, they locked me behind a metal door. That's how crazy I got. My arms were full of needle marks. My nose was full of blood from cocaine. They put me in a room, locked me in because I had now had serum hepatitis, which you get from filthy needles. Wow. So they had locked me in a mental institution in the K Ward in Meyer Memorial Hospital in Buffalo, New York, with needle marks, with mental crazy screaming in my head, giving me a liquid diet to try to clear up the hepatitis. When they finally let me out, I became pregnant again. Oh, no. This time I went to the, Buff the Erie County State Building in Buffalo, New York, and got a legal abortion. So when I left that 
medical building that day after that abortion. And it's still to talk about it, it, it hurts a little. I remember sitting down for the first time and saying, I wanted that baby. That baby I wanted because I felt like I had such a low opinion of myself that maybe this child could change things for me. Of course, it was too late. So here I was, I had had three abortions, a child that was taken away from me. I was hopelessly drug addicted. And the doctor comes to me and he says to me, you have chronic active hepatitis. Your enzymes are right off the hinges. You probably what, what does that mean, chronic? It means hepatitis. that it, chronic means it's constantly going on. Active means it's happening right now. And hepatitis B is a very serious form of hepatitis. He told me that my liver was turning into a piece of leather. Oh. It was in that state that I decided that it didn't matter if I lived. I increased my drugs, I increased the insanity, increased the promiscuous life, increased hatred, was full of violence and totally suicidal. And then one day, standing in a bar, standing in a bar, serving drinks, stealing from the place, everything they had, stealing and lying and getting high in the bathroom, a young woman approached me named Linda Smith. And you know what Sid? She really believed in the power of God. She knew I had experienced the power of darkness, that I knew it was out there, that it worked. But she wanted me to see a higher power, a greater power, that superseded the power that I was operating in. So what did you think of this, Linda? I thought that she talked the talk and didn't just, she walked the walk and just didn't talk the talk. A lot of people talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. And Linda Oof. just showed the love of God in the way she acted. She didn't come out with all these spiritual lingo comments. Yeah, but you told me as a kid you didn't care for this Jesus guy. Because now I was at a place, she was introducing a man to me, a man that didn't rape you, beat you, use you, put you on the streets and stick needles in your arms. A man that was the son of God who loved you for the way you are, not for 15 minutes, loved you for who you were, and who was able to reach down in that liver and reconstruct it, reach into that belly full of blood from bleeding, bleeding ulcers, reconstruct and heal that, reach into a mind that was mentally reconstruct that, reach into a heart that's broken and put it all back together just because he's a man who loves mankind because he was the son of God. How did how'd that happen? She took me to church. She took me up to Pastor Why Tommy Why did you Reed's go church. to church? Because I was dying because... and there was no hope. I figured I'm going to die anyway. Let's go see. And you know what really influenced me to be very honest yes. in the last few minutes of this program? She acted like a person who didn't just put on a facade of Christianity. She lived it. She walked it. She didn't want to impress anybody, Sid. She wanted to introduce to a dying, demon-possessed tramp witch. She wanted to introduce that human being to a man who changed her life. You went into that church. I walked what in. What happened? I was dressed lewd. I had demons in my eyes. They were screaming all Most over my mind. Most pastors would kick you out. Well, some of them wouldn't have anything to do with <laughs> me. But Sid, in a very quick moment, I know we're coming to the end of your program, in a quick moment, the man on the platform said, if you need God to touch you, if you need healing in your body, come on up. I took the longest walk of my life. When I got to the platform, and to this day it brings tears to my eyes, Jesus Christ was waiting for me. Within an instant, within an instant, and I have medical reports, in a moment of a prayer of 1,800 strangers who didn't know my first name, the church stood forth, the blood-bought church began to sing the blood of Jesus. And in a moment, when they began to call on the name that people curse, the name of power and ability. My liver was healed, my stomach was healed, my mind was restored, and I left that church and said, never to be the same. Wow. Should we watch the, should we watch one more part from that video? Just one more part? Let's watch this part. I was instantly delivered from drug addiction, instantly delivered from mental illness, instantly delivered from chronic active hepatitis, instantly delivered from peptic bleeding ulcers. And the Holy Spirit, the only spirit that lives in me now, you can have all those other demons, the only spirit that lives inside me now, and the power and the supernatural anointing began a process of de demons coming out, releasing out of this temple. The only spirit in me now, sir, is the spirit of God. And my life has been changed ever since. My mother got saved. My brother Ronnie got saved from homosexuality. Wow. My father got saved. They all got saved. Let me tell you something. What Carol has just said, there is such danger. I mean danger in the new age that most people are not aware of. I want her back on our next program, and I want her to explain exactly how these powers operate and the difference between these powers and the wow. 
That is pretty insane. And that's only a small taste of it. I wonder what she's up to right now. So we've been working on, um, and this has been a long process, longer than it should have taken, but we started filming a couple uh, testimonies. I filmed one. It's funny that we're, that she was talking about witchcraft and, you know, new age type of spirituality because I filmed a testimony that we should be putting out pretty shortly. Um, and her testimony was similar in a sense to Carol's testimony. And then I just filmed the testimony today and it was more along the lines of like idol worship and um, saint worship and satanic themes and, and stuff like that. But it had some elements of, of witchcraft in it also. And it, I think it's very interesting that there's so many testimonies of individuals, both male and female, coming out of witchcraft in some capacity, in some way, shape, or form. And now we see it popping up again, and it's now become like the new, the new cool thing, like the law of attraction. They're just repackaging it. You have the crystals are coming uh, back up again. If you scroll through TikTok long enough, you'll see people uh, doing tarot card readings. Um, you have all of this um, like evil eyes and all of this stuff that has been around for so long in the world of new age spirituality. Now it's just being repackaged and remarketed to a younger generation so that they can get hooked on it. So I think it is important that we have these conversations and... Um, just be on the lookout because we have a couple testimonies coming out. We're also filming. Um, I have one more that we're going to film this week, and then we have some other ones. Um, but I'm going to link the full testimony from Carol down below in the description. I'm going to reach out to Carol. I'm going to see if we can get her on um, to share her story because I wonder what she's up to right now. I looked her up, and she doesn't really have too many... Um, Posts like she doesn't have that big of a presence on social media. Um, but I think it would be really cool to have her on just to kind of give us an update of kind of what she's been up to and um, maybe retell her testimony from her current vantage point and um, dive deeper into it because that would be super interesting. So hopefully we can make that happen. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. Like this video, hit the description down below if you want to watch the full testimony that Carol recorded. Um, I think that that was from like the 80s. Um, so it's going to be down below in the description. All right, y'all. I'm out.